The Mental Health Show with Mark Haston. Fiona O'Loughlin, how are you? I am very well, Mark Haston. How are you? Well, I'm good. I'm sober, clean. Oh, same. Aren't we lucky? Isn't that great? I know. Oh, it's good. You know, I, I mean, honestly, what was going on? Why, why would we even sort of, you know, contemplate having a drink? <laughs> it's it, it's wonderful, you know, to talk to someone who, you know, knows exactly the hell that mm. we put ourselves in. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, because generally people who haven't lived it, oh, God bless them, aren't they lucky? But if you haven't lived it, it's like trying to describe another colour. Yeah. You know? It is. It is. And, 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 and also... And, 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 you know, you certainly have a far, far, far larger a platform than I do to help people and with, with, with you going public and and I commend you for that. You know, I think that's a wonderful thing. And, 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 and yes, it is brave, but, you know, it's 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 helping you and, and others. But it's interesting, isn't it, when you start helping others, how good you feel about it, you're sober, you help others, it's a great feeling. Then you think to yourself, why on earth was I ever doing the other is that how you? Yeah, feel? absolutely. It's. Yeah. It, it, I look at it with uh, shock and awe, really. Mm. Mm. And and I'm just so grateful to have climbed out of it because so many people don't uh, no. get there, and I, I well could have been one of them. I know you could have. I know. Do you, uh, ha, I have to work at it a lot. Uh, do you have to work at it a lot? Well, Mark, I tend to work at it because I include it in my work. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's so part of what I do. And as you say, that joy of helping others, it actually is uh, vital to pass it on. Mm. It's the only way I manage to keep it is, mm. you know, I talk about it daily to um, strangers online mm. um, and it really does help me as much as them. The only... Um, how, do you, how you know, because you and I are both people who've gone public, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> how did you fare with your own, with the people? I still get a sense that the people closest to me would like me to shut the F up. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting question. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good observation. Right. I think there are certain people who are close to me who feel it's been a good thing. Others who are probably a little more private themselves have said to me, and they don't say it now, they've said, uh, or they said to me, uh, you know, go public with something like that. You know, maybe when you're trying to get another job, it's going to be an issue for you. You know, you, you might not, you know, you might not find the job you want because the employers might feel as though you're a risk. That's probably happened, Fiona, to be honest, but that doesn't worry me. Um, I mean, maybe it would worry me if I was a lot younger and I had 30, 40, 50 years of, of work left in me. Um, oh. But it, it, so it's been a mixture for me. What about you? Well, you know the the astounding kindness I've been shown, you know, from the public has never ceases to amaze me. Yeah. But um, I guess for someone who's, you know, comedians are quite. You either like them or you don't. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> We're a certain, you know, people like a certain type of comedian. I well understand there'd be people out, you know, people who are not their cup of tea. And I imagine they're the kind of people who'd be like, why wouldn't she, why doesn't she shut up? You know, I've had a few people on social media, not many. I've been very, very uh, coddled, really, on my socials. But every now and then it's like, oh, all she does is talk about, her alcoholism, mm. well, I'm sorry, but, yeah, that is probably uh, what I'll talk about for the rest of my life. Not over and over again the same thing, but I'm never not going to be an alcoholic. Mm. Mm. Um, I, I believe I was born an alcoholic in the, in the making. I lived as an active alcoholic for probably close to 20 years. I'm now a sober alcoholic, and when I'm dead, I'll be a dead alcoholic, you know. Mm. And mm. to me, 
it'll be a battle and it will be hard won, but it, we've got to get rid of this shame and stigma. It's absolutely, it, it makes me so angry and it it's so counterproductive if only people knew. Mm, mm, mm. I, 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 I understand. I, I think in terms of going public, I think, I think, you know, and I, I, look, I, I can't speak for myself in terms of how people feel about how I went public or when I talk about it. I mean, I've got a feeling, but for <laughs> you, you, you've done it in a way where it's not, oh, woe is me. It's, you know, please, you know, please feel sorry for me. Da, 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 da. It's more, well, this is my personal opinion anyway. It, it's, it's more, Please, folks, please, people, understand that this is a big issue and understand that it can change your life like that for the, for the worst and you can lose everything, mm. you know, mm. even almost, you know, Fiona, your life. Your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I feel as though if you're doing it in that way, which I believe you are, and I think I think most people do, then that is unbelievably powerful for you. And it's unbelievably powerful for those people that you're talking to, whether it be face to face, interview like this, or on socials. Yeah, I thank you very much for saying so. I like to think of it as a, I mean, I think of my disease, and it is a bloody disease, you mm. know. And I think that's the first thing that um, it would be great if more people could just be on board mm. or come on board with the fact that it is a disease and, you know, any disease has a job to do. Mm. And this disease, you know, I think of it with a personality, you know, and it it would have been, I, I, it's so weird, you know, hindsight is such a beautiful thing uh, in recovery because I look back now, you know, Mark, they say it's a cunning, baffling, powerful disease, and hell it is. I I used to believe, like, I believe I'm talking to Mark Aston right now, that I was terribly nervous before each show. Mm. Like, I felt nervous. The mm. nerves. But, in fact, I think it was the disease. Yeah. Getting me all... Because I can do a show now. I mean, I have a nice amount of anxiety. You, you, nobody's supposed to go out and to a crowd of 400 people with a pulse rate of... <laughs> <laughs> of 120 over 80 or whatever it is, yeah. Yeah, but it was just the nonsense, the lies it would tell me. You know, for so long, my, I, it was my solution and it really was a solution mm -hmm. um, to everything. Mm. So, um, oh God, there's nothing that a drink couldn't fix. Yeah. And I guess it's a, I, I've actually learned that it's okay to grieve it as well. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. And I've only really very recently allowed myself to do that because I just hit my first anniversary of a year off booze and coding. Um, Excellent. Yeah, what a thrill. Right. And I've had, I think, I've certainly done a year before, but never like this. Mm. The last time I, it was when I did Australian Story and, I mean, I thought that was as happy as it got. And I look at, I, I look at that, I looked at it recently and I'm like, oh, God, you poor thing. You <laughs> <laughs> thought that was... <laughs> <laughs> you poor thing. <laughs> but, but what we do know, what what astounds me, Mark, with this um, with this disease, if you, you know, if you were from another planet and we were showing, you know, an alien, what was what what's the go with this? Yeah. As long as there's been alcohol, there's been ten percent of people who have an inverse allergy to it. Oh, totally, yeah, and cannot stop. Yeah. When they start and lose power, lose you know have no power mm. uh, to that second drink or third mm. or what, mm. and it, it. I mean, no one would choose it. 
Mm-hmm. Anyway, this 10%, of that 10%, only no, they're destined to live a ruinous life. While the rest of the well, the rest of the drinking public, you know, can drink with impunity, but there's a cost to that. And the cost is this 10%. Mm. And so it's much easier for us to turn away and not look. Mm. And, and blame it on the weakness of that individual. Well, I'm not buying that because it, this, it, it, there's proof. We have proof. We know that, 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 this is, that this 10% or thereabouts has been there forever and a day and always will be. Mm. And I'm so tired of it being, Oh, you know, I even get crossed with Alcoholics Anonymous and thinking, does it have to be anonymous? I'd love a world where we could be as, yeah, me too, can't touch the stuff. Yeah. Or all hell breaks loose. Mm. Mm. And I think, you know, if people too could only, please, 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 anybody, if you're dealing with a loved one, and I know that we're annoying as all get out drunks. How annoying are we, you know? Um but once, once an addict has decided to make change, you know, and really it's pretty inevitable, it will happen. But once, oh, is that me or you? I'm not sure. I think it might have been me. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Then it, it seems to be that, people, you know, the... The people closest to the addict seem to be still pretty interested in in the drama of of what went on when the addict was under the influence. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a tricky one, I know, because some alcoholics or addicts have harmed. And I guess it, that's a completely different basket. I mean, that's the thing about alcoholics. We'll take it. You know, if we go to jail, we go to jail. Or, you know, it's not I, – I still get it that you have to own it. Mm-hmm. But there's got to be – we've got to do better than we do. Well, it's not It's not working. <sighs> there's, there's no doubt it's not working. What about – do, do well, It's you, life and death, Mark. Yeah, well, it is. It is literally life and death. Did did you, did you, and do you still have issues? Because I certainly do. But do you still have issues with severe guilt and shame as to who you affected when you were, you know, in that hole? Oh, it's it was that. I've had to really um, do a lot of work on that because that guilt and shame. Unfortunately, it's the very thing that will take you down again. Yes, that's a great yes, point. That's, that's a great. really, really, really good point, actually. So I think, you know, I've no problem. I'm I'm good at apologies and I. they're easy for, you know, I don't find it hard to say sorry. And as far as I know, I've, I, I know that I've, Really, all that matters at the end of the day is your family, you know, and 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 the people who love you. And I'm pretty sure I've, <laughs> but I really think I must do a making amends tour, Mark, because you know I would relapse every three months on average. So if I was, and, and my relapses would last anywhere from three days to seven days. Uh, but sometimes, unfortunately, there would be a show in amongst that. And I know Port Ferry, Broom, Wagga. <laughs> I can just, there's, I've got to do a making amends tour. And just, you know, anyone who was there on this night, that they, they're the people I feel for and would love to somehow say sorry to. Because to take away, you know, oh, it just horrifies me to think that people, you know, planned a night out, they got their tickets, they parked the car, they got babysitters to turn up and have a drunk on stage that couldn't 
you know, it's so shameful. But I think I'm the best man for the job anyway, you know. <laughs> 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 but you know, but 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 Fiona, the other interesting thing about what you just said then is that is how powerful this bloody thing is. Oh, who, yeah. Because who in their right mind would? I mean, who in their right mind would would jeopardise a family, a wife, a job, their life, other someone else's uh, life, um, a, a show, their children, yeah, or well, their children, yeah, um, uh, you know, a show in your in your case, uh, who would do that? Mm. Well, we we would do it, but. What is that? And some people would say, and those listening now and watching might go, "Oh, come on, you know, it's a cop out." Well, no, we're taking responsibility for it, but that's how that's how that's how powerful this cunning thing is. You know, that's yes. how powerful it is, yes. and that's why and that's why we should be really proud of what we've done in in terms of and you you for twelve months, me for almost two years. We should be really proud of that and proud about the fact that you know, particularly you with your 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 following. Uh, are helping others, but we should be really proud of the fact that we, at this point, have beaten something that is really, really, really hard to beat. Really hard to beat. Yeah, well, only one percent of those ten percent are. We're 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 bloody miracles. Mm. Mm. And I'm mm. I'm so grateful to be to have survived it. Mm. And it is, isn't it? It's like you've you've survived a, a horrific, long, drawn out. Crash, <laughs> man! It's 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 like the longest nightmare in the world with monsters and ghouls and mm. disasters and explosions and whatever other words and adjectives I can come up with that is just basically just a complete and utter, you know, horror show. Yeah, an absolute horror show. Mm. It, and it, it really is. I think anyone who, um, I don't know, I wonder now, I mean, my son said, he said if alcohol was, um, you know, if they just stumbled across it now, yeah. I think, like, no way are we giving that out. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, 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 tastes, tastes pretty good, but no, we'll give that one a miss. We'll, we'll, we'll give that one a miss, which is unfair on those who can have one glass. I mean, I'm so envious of, you know, I mean, I work at La Trattoria and I work in the pizza bar and quite often I have to walk through the restaurant and there are people in there and I look and they've had one glass in three hours or two hours and they've had a beautiful pizza or a pasta and I'm thinking, you you lucky so-and-so. <laughs> yeah. That would be great. And isn't it interesting, I've walked, you know, you walk past Hutt Street, you know, outside dining room, you look at a couple having a lovely drink in the sunshine, and I think, oh, wouldn't that be nice? And then I, then you have to really hit the honesty button and go, well, Fiona, just do you remember any time you ever just sat anywhere <laughs> and had two glasses of wine? I've never had a drink in my life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a drink in my life. And that's a great line. And I know what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. I understand. And I find it extraordinary to watch non alcoholic drinkers, you know, and, and they can, I'm obsessed with their drinks. Watching someone leaving, you know, an inch in a glass. And oh, yeah. Not being aware of it and being able to walk. I'm like, what are you doing? That's precious. It's I know. crazy. I know. The obsession of the mind with alcoholism is is another part of the disease that I don't think many people are even aware of. Mm. But but whether you you know, I I did a lot of white nut knuckling, a lot of it. Because as a as a mother, particularly of daughters, we get called on it. You know, a daughter, a grown daughter particularly, uh, will call you on it. And I, I have smart, strong daughters and and sons, but there was never, ever, it was never okay for me to drink uh, because I outed myself so early in the peace, Mark, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. and I came out as an alcoholic and I didn't even understand what an alcoholic was. Yeah. Yeah. And I've told the whole world I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that that was after, you know, my 
I guess my my public rock bottom was uh, I don't know how many years ago now, a long time ago, but it was passing out on stage in front of 400 people at the Queensland Performing Arts Centre. And yeah, I joke about it in my show. I say, yeah, basically I bored myself, you know, I nodded off 20 minutes into my own show. But the humiliation of that was almost, it was almost too big to comprehend. And then I've woken up in the Brisbane hospital with an alcohol reading of 0. 0.4, 0.44. And my manager, again, I was due to be on uh, Dancing with the Stars. This, had, this was a Saturday morning I woke up in the hospital uh, and I had to be on stage uh, for Dancing with the Stars on, sun, on that Sunday night. And you see my agent and Channel 7 were encouraging me to tell the media that I was exhausted. I just couldn't do it. Because I knew that there would be 400 people who forever and a day would know that they didn't witness an exhausted woman. Well, I was probably exhausted, but they were looking at a very, very drunk woman. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm forever grateful for that in a way, but, I, God, I, made it, I couldn't have made it harder on myself. So I did white knuckle for, um, as I said, I tried. From that time on it was every on average every three months mm, mm. but drunk or sober this obsession of the mind um obviously it was better to be sober than drunk around the club but it's not much better you're you're still not present no no that, that actually and, and and you make a good point well it's like Your every waking moment, you're thinking about it. Mm. And even though you can't have it, it never leaves you, not for a second. It doesn't leave you alone till you're asleep, you know, and there's such long, long days. My kids say to me now, they say, it was like you you were there, but you weren't really there. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's a lot of loss. Uh, that's the other thing, reason uh, I, I hope for people to, as I said, get rid of this shame and stigma so more people can come forward and, and not only heal themselves, but to heal their kids. It's a terrible thing to be the kid of an alcoholic. Mm. You know, the because they're so afraid. My children, that's the thing I, I that haunts me is how many nights these kids lay awake in in fear. You mm. know, that's not, that should be the other way around, mate. <laughs> yeah, 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 and that's all part of the shame and guilt, isn't it? Yeah. But you made such a great point. And I think it's worth repeating. You made it earlier. And that is that the shame and the guilt can actually, if you don't get hold of that and beat that, well, not so much beat it, that's probably not quite the right word, but but keep it under control, then that can lead you back down the path. I mean, how how nasty is that? How how cunning is that by 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 by, by this, uh, yeah. this this alcohol? I mean, you know what I mean? Like you, you feel as though you've got every right to be fe uh, uh, shameful and unhappy, or not so much fe uh, shameful and feeling guilty about what you've done in the past and who you've affected. And yet if you do that, there's every chance you'll relapse. Yeah. I mean, I mean w w work that out. What's that about? I know. It's almost like how far can I take my recall mm. at my own risk? Yeah, 100%. Something like, yeah. I know. But I do think, it, you know, the, it's very powerful and I do and I do think that there are, there, there are things about alcoholism that bless us. Um and it's hard to explain, I actually would not return this disease. In Not for all the money in the world mm. would I have it any other way mm. because now I get to live. The one thing you have to conquer before you conquer your boo, you know, to conquer alcoholism, 
you must conquer your ego. Mm -hmm. And to, have, to, to conquer your ego is a wonderful way to live. Yeah. yeah. 100%. This is a good discussion. I love this. Yeah. And I would never have found that way to live mm. had I not been an alcoholic. Because mm. I know who I would have been, you know. Had I not been an alcoholic, I still, you know, I'm a show-off. I love attention. I love making people laugh. Mm. Um, I would have, I imagine, it's really interesting because the one thing I know, you know, I can see me if, if things had gone differently and I had been able to dream. I think I would have been really much less likable as yeah. a human being. Mm. I, I don't think I would have listened as well mm. because I would have been showing off, really. Long lunches, uh, isn't she funny? I'm so glad I escaped even a normal life. Having The worst is done now. And I'm grateful. Not many diseases, this is the beauty of alcoholism, there's not many diseases where the treatment, and you know what the treatment is as well as I do, and each alcoholic has their own treatment. We have to create it ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. what it is. Some people go to AA, but at the end of the day we've got to acknowledge every single day uh, that, that we're prey, you know. A possible prey to this <laughs> and arm yourself mm -hmm. and it's so simple for me you know i i got into um wayne dyer have you ever heard of him oh, oh yeah oh. No, sadly he passed away but i've got all of his books well he changed my life yeah it was i i'm it was it was a line of wayne dyer's and what was it he said only when we are truly sick and tired of being sick and tired can we begin to heal ourselves. Yeah. And, and, he, this, and he focuses very heavily on the ego. Yes. Mm, mm. And hell, did I have an ego. Mm. You know, and, and I think, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, maybe you're saying in, in, maybe you're, you're saying indirectly that what happened to you was a gift because I believe that what happened to me, as bizarre as it, it is now to some, for some people to hear this, and certainly at the time when things really fell apart for me, there's no way in the world I thought it was a gift. I thought, what, what's going on here? You know, it, it, this, is, this has turned into a, a disaster. But I look back and see what happened to me as a gift. I think I'm getting the feeling that you look back and – you look back on what's happened to you and actually feel as though it was a gift and that you have taken it and run with it. it, it would that be a fair call? Without a doubt, yeah. It's it's a gift because I would have missed out on living an examined life. Mm, mm. Imagine missing the boat on that. Mm, mm. It's hard, yeah, because, hard for other people to understand that, Fiona, isn't it? Yeah, I guess it is. Well, well, well people who haven't gone through alcoholism or drug addiction or gambling addiction or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it would be difficult for people to conceptualise, well, how could you say that was a gift? I mean, it, it affected so many people. You were embarrassing. You did this, not you, but just generally I'm talking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, could, how could you see that as a gift? But it, it, it yeah, that that's, uh, I, I, I get that, it, yeah, you're seeing it as a gift and that's and that in itself is wonderful because that's, I reckon, and I'm, God, you know, who am I to tell you, but I reckon that is a, a major load off your shoulders as well or other people's shoulders. Yeah. I know my my youngest daughter, I, I think she thinks of it as a gift as well. Mm. That She always said, I knew this had a happy ending, Mum. <laughs> 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 the sweetest thing you've ever heard. That's beautiful, isn't it? Hey, yeah. hey, just, just on that, with her saying that, how, how did that make you feel? Oh, blessed, you know. Absolutely blessed. Mm. And it's it's the last thing I thought would happen to me, you know. I, I had an alcoholic uncle and I used to look at him with very little um, 
oh, I just thought he was mad. Yeah. You know, why would you drink? Why would you do it? And it creeps up on you. Mm, yeah. All of a sudden you're there. And I know the moment of no return for me. Mm, yeah. Um because I always copped a hangover, and I didn't like hangovers, but I copped them and got on with the day uh, until one, I reckon I was 36, and we're having a big, you know, those recovery days that you have after, a, yeah. you know, so we'd be, had a 40th the night before and the recovery was our place in our spring. Mm. And I was, you know. Five kids and 20 people for lunch and pounding headache. And just that, look, hangovers, the physical hangover is nothing compared to the emotional hangover. Oh, That's brutal. That's it's a killer. Like your soul screeching along a tarmac, you know, it's absolutely unbearable. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, a friend of mine said, Come here. And she noticed how green I looked and she poured me a shot of bloody Jamison or something. And I downed it, and holy hell, the hair of the dog. And that was the beginning of the end. Mm. Had no idea. Mm. And then I did the Adelaide Fringe, no, my first Adelaide Fringe, still completely unaware that I was alcoholic. That was the first time I drank uh, daily. I'd never been able to drink on a hangover. Mm. So Adelaide Fringe, of course, I had to drink every day because I can't, couldn't possibly go on stage without my three standard drinks in me. <laughs> And then buddy partying at the Garden of Unearthly Delights till four o'clock every morning. And I remember when that show, that, that season finished, it was 2000. I was staying at my sister's house. And now I know it was the DTs. You know, I was yeah. seeing, mm. I was seeing a black, huge black, uh, like a wild dog uh, mm. in my face. Mm. And it was as real as you are, mm. the most terrifying thing, and I had no idea what it was. I realised years later it was it was the DTs, yeah. Mm. But the gift of it is, though, too, I think, is to, to understand the harm that we are capable of, of causing and to know that we can... You know, thankfully, I have an image, it's a gross image, but not all miracles are pretty, you know. Um, but it's just a, a look, it's the face of one of my children mm. looking out the car window the morning after mum's done it again. Mm. Mm. And I'm able to pull that image out. And as sad as it is, that image keeps me sober. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah. she was heartbroken mm. and I was the one that, you know, that, that was at, at my hands. So when it comes down to the shame and all of that, that's pretty much the only photo I keep, you know, that image. That's enough. That's, that, mm. that, that, that is very, very, very powerful. An image like that um, is, is going to, and, and, and if for those listening, something like that, is 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 worth putting somewhere where you see it all the time, perhaps. Mm. Hey, Fiona, do do you feel as though, um, as a result of where you're at now, and and you, I'm sure you're like a lot of us. It's just one day at a time, so you know I don't particularly want to ask you any personal questions about where you think you'll be in twelve months or two years or whatever. When I say personal, I mean what we're talking about, but. What I do want to ask you, though, is do you feel as though with the journey you're on you could be an even better comedian? I already am a better comedian. Wow. And that's, wow. you know, I, I've never actually stood by my work. Um, mm. Even, yeah, you know, there was something I, I disrespected about my own work. And I guess it was because I was... You know, I, I was a drug cheat, basically. That's that's like cheating. <laughs> and I would say, you know, alcohol affects the frontal lobe and your inhibitions. I'd, I'd say things that, yeah, sure, they were outrageous things to say, but I wouldn't have said them sober. 
Mm. There's a smarter way to say it. Yeah. A cleverer true. way. Yeah. And I don't really stand by much of my stand up until uh, these past few years. Well, that's a wonderful thing. See, that's the. Oh, you, it's so joyful, Mark. It's like. Mm. It, because my stand up used to be something. And this talks about, it gets back to the ego. I felt, you know, we grew up in an era where there wasn't much, you're the best, mm. didn't we? Not, not yeah. many. Absolutely. That's how it was. Yeah. Um, mm. And I felt deep down terribly guilty for having so much. Um, yeah, I felt guilty a lot of the time uh, that I got so much attention and mm. and I'd set, I'd, I was rewarded for so much bad behaviour in many ways. Mm. But um, yeah, now I it's it's like it's brand new to me. Stand up was just something I had to get through as best I could. knew knew my shows, mm. but I wasn't present in the show. Not, yeah, yeah, and now it's like it's night and day for me. Mm. I don't because now it's my only outing. Mm. Mm. I'm not. There was always a part of me, while I, particularly during festivals. Oh, I can't wait! You know, I'll get this show done and all the applause, and then I'll go out and get more. You know, um, mm. and when I came to terms with, and it's actually what I told my children um, that if you have a gift. It doesn't make you special. You, I mean, we're all special. Mm. But it's the luck of the draw. Some people are beautiful. Some people have long legs. Some people are great spin bowlers, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's just your genetic, what you got. Mm. So give it away freely and don't be precious about it, you know, except and be grateful for it, and and that's freed me no end. Yeah, it's a great word, free. In, in oh, this freedom. This is like freedom. Yeah. I, I feel like I, I've been let out of jail. Yeah, in this instance, free, free, the word free, freedom is a is a beautiful thing. It's, uh, and again, I don't want to be presumptuous, but, and, and just very, very briefly, because obviously this is about you, but for me, I felt a fraud for a long time while I was doing Yes. Radio and TV is is that how you uh, is that how you absolute fraud yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh if they only knew what yeah. a rotten yeah. piece of I am yeah. you know yeah you imagine you imagine the pressure on you uh, knowing that hiding it masking it masking maybe some depression masking the alcoholism masking how you feel about being a fraud mate that's so tiring. Oh, exhausting! It's it really. It's so tiring. You could sleep all day, and you'd still be tired if, if yeah. you think about that. And, yeah. And and to release that, and again, I, I don't mean to, but but to release that again, that gives you. Well, I think it gives you so much more confidence, self esteem, motivation, uh, purpose. And when someone's as talented as you, and I don't mean to embarrass you, but when someone's as talented as you at something and has been for a long time, despite the fact that you might have felt like a fraud or whatever, or you weren't doing it as well as you could have, can you imagine how much abundance there is in the future for you? Oh, <laughs> thank you. It, it is exciting. Yeah, don't. Can, I can't believe, um, you know, if I could, anyone listening, You've got to un- you've got to hear the joy that you're that you're in for. I mean, you've got to work for it. Yeah, yeah. But you are in for. See, I thought sobriety just meant you didn't drink anymore, and you. <laughs> and that was it. It's, and that was it. Yeah, yeah, I know. This is like this is like give, being given a whole brand new life, and the only thing I can't do that I used to do. Was be, you know, I was so funny, Mark, at the start of a night out. You know, I remember Mikey Robbins saying, "When I'm name dropping terribly," but he'd say to me, 
off, you know, you'd walk into the Peter Cook bar and that was the hub for the comedians in Melbourne. He said, you'd walk in and we knew the party had started. Yeah. You know? But I'm very at peace with saying goodbye to the party. Mm. You mm. know, I've had a great party, but mm. the party has ended. Mm. And it's been replaced with something uh, so, it's so bloody joyful and so precious mm, mm. that, oh, God, if I've got to give up that one thing, because, you know, that being that funny person at the party, and I, I remember who said this to me, and it was Greg Fleet. Yeah. And every now and then people will say things to you and uh, on your way to getting sober and they plant a little seed or you never forget that they said it. And, you know, Greg was using heroin at the time, I'm sure, uh, and I don't think I'm breaking any confidence. No, no, that was all public, yeah. Yeah. So he had no reason. Uh, he was just being brutally honest mm. and he made the um, uh, observation. We were, we were sitting outside having a drink at the Sydney Comedy Store and he said, yeah. He said, God, I've noticed... With you, you used to be so funny. There was nothing better than when you hit the party, and you still are. But he said it used to last for hours. <laughs> and he said now you're funny is really over in about half an hour. And he said, and then you you get really boring. He said you repeat yourself. Mm. You laugh a lot at yourself. You really <laughs> <laughs> And because I knew this bloke was telling me, giving it to me as straight as a die, because he had no other reason, you know, mm. why would anyone say that unless they meant it? Mm. Mm. Yeah, and that was another, and that was the truth of the matter. And you can't reverse that. And we can chase it. It's like chasing any drug. You know, you'll never, ever get that feeling. It will never be as good again. No. no. So even if I were to stop drinking for 20 years, I'd, I'd be exactly the same because mm. the disease has already progressed that far. 100%. And, and, of course, as we know, that's the danger of starting again and it's the danger of even contemplating the I could just have one, or you could just have one. Hey, Fiona, the um, uh, the unreliable witness. How long's the book been out? Uh, about three months, three or four Good. months. Good. Um, and you've got a show by the same name on the twenty third of January at the Dunstan Playhouse. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, Next um, Saturday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Or Friday. Not, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying the twenty third of January. Yeah, it's not far away at all. Um, uh. I just wanted to thank you um, so much for hey, – look, I know you've done, you know, a lot of these interviews. I understand that. But, you know, it, it's a different audience um, and we're sort of doing it on socials as well and we're doing it visually. Um, and I really want to thank you for, you know, being so open and honest and for, for, you know, I'm sorry for everything you've been through and a lot of people have been through similar. But, you know, as you said, it was meant to happen. It's a gift. You're through it, you're working on it, and you're helping other people. And I think that is just to be absolutely commended. It's just a great thing. I'm right back at you, Mark. Tell me, what's it like two years down the track? Is it still as good? <laughs> well, well, it's different because obviously I'm not, you know, I'm not working and, I mean, not that the money, I couldn't care less about the money now, but, you know, I'm not working at 10. I'm not, well, I'm doing some, obviously I'm doing the stuff on 5AA uh, where I'm filling in over Christmas. But, you know, so I don't have a, I don't have sort of two full time jobs where I'm earning a lot of money and living in a lovely house and driving a lovely car and living with my beautiful wife. I mean, none of that is. I mean, I lost everything, um, and, and I'm very sad and, uh, by losing my wife. That's horrible. Uh, I mean, that's I, they'll never get over that. And she'll Same. Probably, it's yeah. brutal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and 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 I'm forever guilty, and I just feel horrible about that. But I don't care what car I drive. I mean, I don't care if I have to fill shelves at. Um, at uh, Coles or Woolworths, uh, I don't care what sort of a house I'm living in. I mean, I'm lucky I'm with my sister here. 
none of that stuff is – I'm not saying that I wouldn't aspire to, to, to you know, up the ante in two or three years' time, but the point I'm making is I'm not worried about that at all no. in any way, shape or form. It's like I, I probably have an ego, but I couldn't care less whether people know who I am, whether I'm on TV or not. Couldn't care less. All I care about is getting is continually getting well, is to continually stay sober and clean and no gambling. And if I can do that, given that I did all of that stuff since I was fourteen, I'm sixty two now, then that's a win for me. If if I can go to the grave and and never do any of that again but not achieve anything from a career point of view or a marriage again point of view. I mean, I have a beautiful daughter and, and, and a lovely brother but and some friends. If, if, if I don't achieve those other things, which are totally materialistic and very false anyway, I couldn't care less as long as I keep well and as long as I'm as good a person as I can possibly be. Oh, geez, you're speaking my language. Because mm. I've started again, you know, we, we lose everything, don't we, you know, the – the, the loss is huge. Yeah, it's um, yeah. Financially. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So I find myself 50, <coughs> what am I, 57, living in a, in a very humble <laughs> little, little flat that I'm renting. I don't own a home. Um, but the same, Mark, I don't. Mm, mm. Nothing. Nothing seems to be getting anything but better. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And, and to be honest, be honest, well, not to be honest, to be frank, that's how we have to think. Because if, if we're chasing other things, then we're going to neglect our health. And then when you neglect your health, everything else falls down around you, as, yeah. we, as we both know. Yeah. So it has to be that way. I mean, you know, if someone came to me now and said, look, you know, I've got a full-time job for you, blah, blah, blah. If I don't feel as though I'm in the right headspace, well, there's no point in taking it no. because I'm not going to last and that's going to that's going to be disrespectful to them. It's going to be I'm going to feel bad about that. And so it, you ha it has to be health first. It has Absolutely. to be. It has to be. You know, it has to be. 23rd of January, Dunstan Playhouse. The book, by the way, is called The Unreliable Witness, which is which is a very clever and beautifully named Fiona O'Loughlin. That was that was an experience. Thank you, Mark. You're very good at this. I really enjoyed myself. Mm. Well, that's the first interview I've ever done. I've never interviewed anyone else before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I just thought I'd have a crack at it and see how I went. <laughs> hey, bless you, Fiona. You too.